<laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane. Featuring today are two versus two on a wrecked train. She is indeed wrecked trains. It will be a Monday numbers fight. This, of course, we shall, of course, be watching some mistakes happen and explain why the mistakes. Perhaps, you know, consider better things to do than make those mistakes. So, who shall be fighting? It shall be ACWP fighting for the 20th Infantry Rifle Brigade, supporting the Otainico, fighting for the 9th Infantry Division in a blockade formation against Tai Dude and Kraut Boys fighting for the 107th Panzer Brigade. Points are being secured there. Brits advancing up the right hand side. Obviously, this is where they intend to go, securing a dominating position over this victory point. Pretty standard stuff. Let's move forward to cut a point where they at least initially can't move past and be a nuisance. At the same time, we are seeing an infantry presence out, but note the presence of the placement of the barracks. Perhaps not the best one. <laughs> Could have been closer to the edge, I would say. Three engineers start, so clearly Oitanus intends to secure our territory. We're seeing Cat and Crowd here from Crap Bars, but only one. Two, on the other hand, from Thai Dude. Trying to, of course, secure as much territory initially. And some pans are going to marching up with Gavir 43s on the way. And right there, we do see a Vickers machine gun emplacement going down for ECWB. Not necessarily anything out of the order there. Uh, again, considering it's a novice, of course there might be other intentions than the usual one for more higher ranking player, which is to protect this against getting rushed. And of course, again, note it also keeps this one within big protection. So of course that might actually be the intention. There we go, the Vic has quickly getting the hands down on the ground. Seeing them running out another infantry section out. Obviously no lieutenant to keep them moving. So they will be a lot more worried as soon as they exit the territory, unlike the recce section. Which is much more, much more bold, having had something put in their tea. Probably amphetamines. Amphetamines or some other substance of illicit nature otherwise. We are seeing engineers engaging the panzer gun days, but they're not really coordinated and... This could very easily go to the favor of the Panzer guys. No, they're actually retreating in the face of the engineers. The engineers moving in with their grease guns. Firing away. Trying to clear out those Panzer guys. There we go. Heinz is down. Heinz is down. Torn. Oh dear, they're actually two Panzer guys down to the engineers. And engineers can take on Panzer guys. And they're only losing one engineer. I mean, that's just bloody nice for Itano. And of course, that's something you have to be careful about as the Panzer elite. Obviously, taking up position there. Left ten and out for AZWB in his pullover. Rifle holding up far there, keeping the Panzers inside the house a bit occupied. Points are being secured, connecting territory up there. I mean, so far the Panzer Brigade or the Panzer Elite are holding most of the map, but they are slowly losing ground. More Panzer Grenadiers moving in, more weapons. Immer mehr Waffen. Rather than getting pushed back here, point secure there. So far, not an awful lot. And another fight here, but this time the engineers are losing with horrible losses. Get out of there, Sipovitz! Get out of there! And he does leg it in the end, and just in the nick of time. We are seeing Panzers pushing up here. These engineers are not going to last long, nor are these rifles. They're going to get caught out in the open, which they are, of course. Their car won't be out much there. And the rifles are quickly dropping under the withering fire of the Panzer Grenadiers. And we are seeing more emplacements going up. We're seeing another Vickers machine gun emplacement to cover this one, and we're seeing a mortar emplacement. So we're clearly seeing an incredibly defensive British plan. Of course, this is. Uh, what shall we say? Cardinal novice mistake again. Investing all of your resources in ecstatic defenses because again they're great for holding one point, but without a larger infantry force, I mean they're going to be all separate and not able to help each other much. The More specifically, they can't help your teammates. Of course, in this case, Oitano is going to take a much better beating because the two Panzer Grenadier forces can actually work together against the riflemen. So in that sense, there's an immediate advantage for the Panzer League players. Right now moving in. Points are being secured. 
And now we do see some minor support from the Brits. But this lieutenant is not there to actually help and guide them. Bren guns up. Finding way rounds flying at the Brits. One poor Brit is down though. Tommy did not survive that shot. And looks like the rifle now retreating there. Simply too many Panzer Grenadiers with too many give air 43s. The German semi automatic rifle of choice, although they were also quite fond of the SVT 40, which was a Soviet one. Down to three troops right here. Light cover that is, you know, do, does not provide a lot of protection. It basically just makes your troops a bit harder to hit, but unlike heavy cover, it does not provide damage resistance. Because, again, in this case, you know, boxers aren't exactly known for their abilities to stop bullets. At least not very well. And of course, I mean, if they're made of steel, perhaps, but you know, not wood. Wooden boxes are terrible. Already now, we are seeing BAS up for Itano. Only three rifles are so pretty bold. Panzer is catching on fire, getting shot at. Quickly pinning down the engineers, though, with support of fire from another squad from Crap Boys. And it's actually time to look at him. Azar. Doing a bit poorly there. Mortars firing. In the name of the Commonwealth, but not really doing much. Again, all they're doing so far, at least he's doing, is sending all of the opponent there. But again, he's going to have less resources to support his team when worth. Because again, what did he do? Oh, that's right. He posted all of his resources in free emplacements. How great, Larry. Quickly taking up position in the remains of the old empty barn. Putting in an awful lot of riflemen. Infantry half track out. Which the Panzer Brigades did have. Half tracks at this. They were actually largely mechanized units, but again, the problem was a bit they were not combined arms units to a certain extent. They lacked a lot of artillery, for example, a lot of reconnaissance units and engineer units and other such things. They were quite an interesting concept, but definitely not really well suited for fighting the Western Allies. They were more suited towards the Russian army. Pushing up there, these pants guys are definitely caught in a nasty spot, in particular with the mortar raining in round after round. And we are seeing a field support truck arriving. Enemy forces we are, are seeing direct straight here for pants support command taking it up. Goodness gracious. And the rifle is still in there, shooting away madly. A lot of men hiding here, hoping not to have to do anything. Will there be incendiary grenades to try and burn up the Yankees? Who knows? Panzer support command up for Thai dude. Looks like they might be paying something here, but again, there are a lot of machine guns. And what is this? Another Vickers. I mean, he's really laying down an all-round right defense, but again, he's not really going to be able to assist. I mean, his teammate very much in any offensive or defensive measure, even. And right now, of course, this trench is getting rather considerably overrun and they're getting rather considerably shot down mortar rounds are falling down but the Reculats might not make it out of this one alive nope he managed to make it past all the incredibly rotten cows at least I think they're cows and there we go the mortar causing heavy losses several panzer grenades and a few Tommies lying around and their bodies broken And battered. Incendiary and grenades up. Panzer Kampfwagen fear. The infantry support variant is up. And we did also see the Stug variant of that. Actually, again, these are actually earlier variants of the Panzer IV and the one in the trailer we saw of the Stug III, which actually back then had short barrel versions because they were more meant for supporting infantry and then sort of dealing with armor secondarily. I mean, in that sense, the earlier Panzer IV was much more had much more in common with the Sherman than the later one had in sort of concept design. Whereas once the Germans sort of really got into the world of the war, I figured we need our tanks to also be good against other tanks. Rather than have specialized units because again you can't always count on those specialists being around. But well, there we go, armored skirts on the way, the Schutzen. Initially designed to combat anti-tank rifles because again back then these tanks also had rather thin armor, in particular side armor which the anti-tank rifles could pierce. Later on, of course, that became less of a problem, but they still kept them ca against anti-tank grenades and other such anti-tank weapons. But the 
Panzer IV rolling in. Lots of Bren guns in there. So might be he's blobbing up a bit. There's no left tender to support it though. 30 caliber out for Oitano. Oh, he's not going for any vehicles or armor. That could actually prove to <laughs> bite him in the ass. And the Panzer IV pretty much bombing out the occupants of that house. Recky section catching on fire as the booby trap goes off. At the same time, blobbing up here again. Not really the sign of any highly strong or competent player. But let's go look at Oitanoko. Marching forwards, infantry traffic going about, getting a bit hit there from something over here. By the looks of it. And there go these pants are going to simply run off. Rushing in here. Has to be kept again. Also note, troops in half tracks are quite vulnerable to flame throws and grenades. You could easily send a lot of these pants are suddenly vanishing because they died. Veterancy for the flame for engineers. Assault rifles. Bit of an attempt at a drive-by shooting here, but not quite succeeding. Panzer IV though saves the day in the south. Ah, apparently no losses for some bizarre coincidence, but the Stig doesn't even finish it off. It only destroys the engine though. Makes one mean barbecue grill. We are losing a sector. Kitten crowd here definitely not doing too well. By the looks of it, we are seeing scorched earth doctrine. 17 pounder gun up, further defensiveness. He's really, you know, must be a World War One general or something. Just digging in harder and harder. Figuring that's what you Just win by. But of course, again, forgetting that again, he puts a lot of pressure on his teammate. And also means, you know, once he's gone again, if there's some attack foul here on the flank, he might run into trouble. We'll be trapping the house. Rangers joining in the fun as well. No Thompsons for them though. Oh wait, never mind. Panzer IV could do with some repairs. And of course he could be getting expert repairs. Of course the thing to remember what well, if you're using expert repairs of course is and if you're upgrading it is if your units are repairing something and they didn't have upgrade the upgrade before began repairing and it then appears you have to have to reissue the order otherwise it will actually not happen at the newer pace so something to remember there there you go looks like he's lining up for another blob assault of course the problem with that of course is basically you can end up with a lot of downtime after you get beaten back with heavy losses pipes even so of course in that case that's not that is one of the sort of major drawbacks to lobbing again if you're not careful. But again, we need to get all of these emplacements, all of these units being tied down into specific points. But again, they can't help the teammate. They can't, for example, you know, strike down here and do some damage. Because again, he's not going to be moving that far. He's simply too passive. And right now we are seeing an armor car holding up this column because they don't have a left hand to support them. I mean, this is a player definitely way too passive. Another booby trap, perhaps. And there we go. And a full retreat. Pentagon is with a mesh of weapons moving up. Assault going in here again. The blob advances. And of course there's a Panzer IV right behind them. With armored skirts so it's largely protected against sticky bombs and even the bazookas. Assault pushing up here. No and dear wise and constantly doing that thing again. He must know of the defenses so why he's doing that and of course blowing up himself is a bit beyond me. Half track here could be lost. And there we go. What a waste of good half track. Enemy unit down. And he's enough. He's building all of the buildings, but he doesn't really seem to be doing much with them except get some assault rifles. And now the American blob has broken through. Now the question is, what will it do? More trenches. And we are seeing Royal Engineers up the Churchill has rolled in to support the Trinity Rifle Brigade. So Royal Scots Engineers, rare you see that. Going in for the cutoff point, just one thing to remember. 
you need to then actually dismantle both of them because as long as one headquarters get the resources both players get the resources quick thing there Panther 4 with the damage engine blob on the run the great retreat Oitanikos greatest disappointment having a look at the Brits again trenches again Really, someone seems to think that, you know, digging and doing nothing is the way to go. Again, it's not. It basically means you have a lot of resources doing nothing. It means you're giving your opponent time to attack and deal with you. It means time he can basically just figure out, oh, where's the weakest spot? Let's attack that and slowly knock down the entire thing. It should be part of a larger thing where you can then have sort of forces running about to support whatever point needs it. They should sort of be the backbone of your defense, but they should not be your defense. If that makes sense. It should be something to sort of build it around, but again, not the entire thing. Something you're, oh, right, getting attacked here. Quickly form around my MG bunker, or nest, or my mortar emplacement, or anti-tank gun, or whatever. You, they should not just be a lot of those things. Because again, for example, this MG nest can't, for example, help up here. On the other hand, of course, the infantry, if they were mo more mobile, could help out there. Again, that's sort of the things we're talking about. Which, of course, means if enough force is applied up here, for example, this thing will collapse. Because, again, all of these things down here can't help. Again, that's rather important stuff. Rangers here out in the open, getting shot down by the Panzer Gates, some with offensive veterancy. The Panzer Brigade making some progress, but, of course, not an awful lot. Bazooka's moving in there, some of them out of cover. Incendia grenades into the trenches. Like a very, very rude prank played during World War One. Look, George, we lit their trench on fire. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Anyways, Panzer is fighting right here. Range is not really doing well. Another blob assault. Would be nice if there were more assault rifles. They could drop some incendiary grenades. Either way, they need to retreat. Rückzug, Männer. Rückzug. Schnell verlassen Sie die Stellungen. And we are seeing a buff us up. This half tank is going to go down faster than something that goes down really fast. Panzer is here taking heavy losses, popping into the trench, but they are not really in a good condition. Churchill moves in. Also, fun fact, the first Allied tank to actually knock out a Tiger was actually a Churchill tank. So, fun fact there, happened in uh, Tunisia. Well, the Tiger was first deployed. And of course, it's a bit hard to sort of determine. You know, some seem to think, you know, Tunisia is separate. Some see it as part of North Africa. I sort of see it as part as North Africa. But that's another discussion. Just felt, you know, I'd like to point it out. Again, one of those fun little things. Of course, is Churchill was part of a larger series of, you know, infantry tanks. You know, heavy tanks meant to break through. Sort of, again, the same concept behind some of the Soviet tanks. Although they had much more bigger guns and some of them later on sort of help against tanks but again primary job was to deal with fortification of sort of fire but they also for example had the Matilda tank which the Soviets also used but they used it as a medium tank because that was actually what suited them much better funnily enough but the Soviets actually also used Churchill tanks and some of their heavy tank regiments <laughs> Panthers are arriving now Crap boys rolling in too. Churchill all of a sudden becoming a very easy target. And Sappers hiding with Panzer X and Piatz. Half track rolling in. Not entirely sure what's doing that. And again, there seems to be a sort of lack of situational awareness or battlefield awareness by Ty, dude. I mean, he must have remembered this buff force, which of course quickly made short work of him. In fact, killing all the Korean side as well. Poor play by Tyndu, and again, there seems to be some lack of unit preservation from the two. I mean, Tyndu certainly lost a lot. Crap boys as well as lost a lot of infantry. Not really solid. Again, something that can actually bite them in the ass if the British player didn't just dig in. Harder than a tick. Yeah, 
Panther needs to pull away, but no instead it gets Diggy Bomb. This one needs to turn about. Panther 4, though, helps stopping the Rifleman right advance. Oh, Sect Artillery goes in and absolutely devastating the Rifleman right, right there. Nice job by whoever called in. Probably Crap Boys, and this is the one who got scotched. I Earth. More sappers out. I mean, note again, quite a bit of infantry, but again, what are they doing? They're sitting in trenches playing poker or whist. Backgammon for all I know. But I mean, we've got a tie dude again. Who has gone for tank destroyer? Might be going up for his own. Panther Battle Group, and he's pulling in what little artillery the Panther Brigade, Panzer Brigade would have had, which were mortar half tracks. Again, they were not meant for sort of larger engagements, just to sort of counter-attack any Soviet advance was made and knock out the spearhead. Basically trying to knock out some of the defenders here, the Vickers machine gun emplacement in the middle of the road. And he's sort of wondering, is this actually safe? Panzer is coming under a bit of fire. Going for the central victory point. Panzer Shake adding in the fun. And there we go. Machine gun emplacement. Rama gone. I'm moving in. And looks like a headset has been called in. Normally not part of the Pan Brigades, though, so person could have been attached from an independent tank destroyer battalion. Although they didn't actually take part in Operation Market Gun. They only again came about at the time of their dens on the Western Front. Otherwise, they actually largely fought on the Eastern Front. Look, another machine gun replacement. Another 17 pounder gun. Again, rather poor play, sort of strategically. Again, rather waste of resources. And again, nothing that can actually sort of help in the longer run. And again, something that's going to be slowly dismantled. We are seeing a bit of artillery going in by the looks of it. What's that? Mortar rounds. Hets here not doing too well. Getting blasted by the 17 pounder gun, taking quite a bit of damage. Infantry section almost down. Sticky bomb and oh, the heads went down. It was so close. Rifleman squad though goes down in return to the Panzers with increased squad sizes and Sturmgewehr. So a bit of mortified to try and soften up the British. Mighty 17 pounder gun firing away as well. Bit of explosions here and there, a bit of sector artillery. And a bit of counter mortar fire. And again, nothing, you know, deeply and exciting. Deeply exciting, I mean. Well, Panzer IV standing back doing nothing, Panther not doing much either. Defensive operations, anti tank grenades. Assault grenadiers again, one thing to note. When you have the munitions for it, and this gun has fallen in 25, don't train assault grenadiers, just train regular grenadiers and spend the munitions on it because you always want to spend munitions over manpower. Always. And in this case, he's actually wasting manpower, which could have been put to use better places. So that is something I would rather like to point out. There we go. Incendiary rounds down on the trenches. Not actually hitting the trenches though, quite. I'm pretty sure it's still going to be unpleasant down there. Half tracks moving a bit. Speeding this up because otherwise it's going to take forever, I think. There we go. Northern attack, but again, no. It's a lot less resources for Eternal. A lot less. And I was actually relying on anti tank guns. Because again, it's too late to get out anything else, so of course, otherwise the Panthers will dominate it. So again, a rather poor play, partly also because, again, there was no help from the Commonwealth player. He was too busy, you know, playing, I don't know, Lord Haig, for all I know. 
Right, we'll take up position in the barn right in front of every soldier right there and the Panzer IV. Artillery going in, so he has obviously gone infantry, of course, with the range as well. Hit. Actually doesn't do much there. Building could collapse. And there we go. Squad gone. But the Panzers need to get out of there. Get out of there. And by some absolutely insane luck, crowd boys. Oh no! <laughs> A mortar round knocks it out. I think I don't know which mortar did it, but something knocked it out. At the same time, crap boys is pushing up here, going for another, going for the mortar emplacement and knocking it out. A commission permanently. Also getting up a nice line of sight on the 17 pounder gun which could open up for an armoured assault. And Titanga knocks out the Panthers as well, did not pull that one back again. Poor armour preservation as well from the Germans, from Crab Boys. This one again fits in with the whole Panzer Brigade, most of the troops were poorly trained, certainly not all the commanders either were up to snap. And there we go, Howard's up, knocking out several Panzers and then behind a Panzer Shrek. A bit grim for both sides, actually, to be honest. There go the 25 pounder gun firing. The British sort of categorizing their guns after, well, weight of this shell. It was sort of an older system, which the British actually stuck to, whereas most of the game went for the caliber of the gun. The British basically said, Well, how big is it? A shell is it fine? Well, 25 pounds? Good. That's what we call the gun now. Perhaps acting it a bit, tragically. Reiki section getting murdered. And again, troops in the trenches achieving pretty much nothing. Again, a whole series of defences achieving nothing. Again, cannot help Oitanoko in his attacks. Of course, he's simply going ground down. Pretty much standard rubbish stuff. Anti tank grenades up now for crap boys as well. And seal. British troops here getting hammered. He could secure a Bren gun for usage. Lieutenant going to go down. Except everybody seems to be ignoring him and he's just firing right into their backs. And a bit of artillery. And the Lieutenant survives everything. Panzer grenades might want to consider retreating. Come on, crap boys, show some simple unit preservation. You sweet homicidal bastard. And the 17 pounder gun gets finished off by mortar rounds. Just continues their reign of reigning death. And incendiary rounds right into the trenches, lighting the entire thing on fire. Quite viciously. And again, this part again can't help down here, except for the 25 pounder gun. Well, that is itself is is in itself quite exposed. And he builds more. This part again. There's a huge gap right there, massive, a chasm of a gap in his defences. More Panthers arriving this time from Thai dude. Uh, might as well speed this up while Oitanoko now tries to push in here to sort of keep things occupied there. A bit of artillery going in. Grenades getting lopped. Charging straight into the assault rifles. Going to make short work of the Rangers and the riflemen and all other sorts of nasty business. Panthers firing. Riflemen and Rangers are simply getting murdered. Also the Panthers actually. Another assault up here but yeah still the machine gun there.
quite a bit of action right here. Lots of artillery raining in from the two 25 pounder guns. Another bit of pushing here, but again getting stopped by the trenches and the machine gun emplacements. Another one, by the way, has been built. Into their trenches and grenades, I mean into the trenches. But not enough actual support here to clear this out. Although, never mind, looks like one of the mortars... Nope, that's an infantry half-track. The mortars are there. It's time to return to Oitzaniko, who's... Yeah, not got a lot left. Except munitions. But again, no, not an awful lot left. And Hummel now arrives. The Hummel self propelled artillery. Part of the Panzer Artillery Regiment of a Panzer Division. Must have been sent in from elsewhere since the Panzer Brigade would not have had those. There was, of course, also the Vesper, which was sort of a lighter variant with a 105mm gun. Half track charges right into everything and it pops out the troops into the trench, which of course has been cleared. Nicely done there. Incendio grenades into the. No, that's an anti tank grenade apparently. And the lieutenant finally goes down to a stray mortar round. The trench gets cleared out. Another Churchill moves in, this time the AVRE. Part of Hobart's funnies, as they were known, a series of converted art vehicles for use in the Normandy invasion. This one equipped with quite the high close mortar round. Or spigot round. And he actually cancels the trench just as the round hits. And might want to get into that trench. Of course, that's going to take some time before that thing collapses. Panthers rolling in. Grenades, right. Grenades are up for Itanico, but again, he's not really going to do much. And looks like the half checks went down to artillery. Nice bit of counter artillery there, I suppose. Panthers arriving. Churchill will not have a chance. Itanico moves in his forces and again. There's all this again doing nothing. Thing. Grenades into the trench, clearing out the Panthers. Artillery, but the artillery does nothing. Only the grenades clears it out. Heavy losses for all sides involved. But the British player is pretty much buggered. I mean, his forces have gone tits up and his plans have failed like they ought to. And there we go. Possibly in tears. Leaving it to a sub commander. Enemy unit Much unknown. Armored cut down. No idea why that was sent up there. No, he's actually not paying up. He's actually training something from it. Let's beat this up a bit. Partly because Flap seems to have gone into his head. It's time to make up some fuss. And of course, I just want to get this over with as soon as possible. Another headquarters command track moving in. The exact right, same space. That was pretty much staffed. Gone. 25 pounder guns need to be dealt with. Panzer guns with Panzer X moving up. There we go, gone. Troops getting suppressed. Artillery going in from the Hummels. Allied troops on the retreat again. Lots of heavy artillery going in. Let's on C3 and there we go. Game over. Otanico and the 9th Infantry Edition pulls out. Following after the 20th Infantry Break of Rifle Brigade, and there we go, game over, a loss to the Allies, victory to the Paris Elite. Bit of a novice game there again, and the major sort of theme here again, you know, don't just build defense again, I'd rather explain, but again, let's just reiterate, 
or reiterate. Defenses can't support each other like that. Static defenses are meant to hold a specific part of the map and again should not be the primary part of it. They should be sort of the key of it and the backbone of it, but they should not be all of it. And again, it partly results in resources spent that can't help other elsewhere. It also means, of course, you can't help your teammate because, again, while he might be pushing again, you can't support him because all your resources are tied into places. So again, in that way, pretty poorly done, and he never helped his teammate, which again resulted in his teammate getting largely hammered. On the other hand, the Pantomic players were able to help, help each other by having a much more mobile force to strike where they wanted, to drive to wear the American down, and then strike the British player, which worked out quite nicely. And again, you know, that's how you do it. Of course, the unit preservation needs to be worked on greatly. <laughs> greatly, in fact. Plus some other bits, but there you go. Hope you learned something from this match. If you did, why not subscribe to your friends? And if you didn't, well, why not to know replay of your own? This is Impil Dane. Sing cheers.